My name is Bobby Farsidis. I'm Professor of Clinical and Biomedical Ethics at the Brighton and Sussex Medical School. And my area of research interest is in empirical bioethics. I'm interested in what healthcare professionals and scientists do when they find themselves faced by tricky ethical issues in their day-to-day -day work. What we've found when we've looked at organ donation in this country is that you have to think of a whole range of possible obstacles. It's not just about how ordinary people feel about death and dying and organ donation. It's also about the way in which we organise our health service. It's the way in which we train healthcare professionals to deal with difficult situations such as talking to families of a loved one close to death. And it's also about the very fundamental machinery of the NHS. And one of the things that has been done in recent years is to try and think of ways of making organ donation much more usual than unusual and part of NHS core business. When the Organ Donation Task Force set itself a 50% increase in donation rates within five years. I think everybody thought that was very optimistic. So it was an absolute triumph to have achieved that. And the only way that that was achieved was by everybody that's involved in the donation story playing their part. But I would want to give particular credit to the people who work in hospital ITUs, accident and emergency units, who are the people who have to do the very delicate work of approaching families and engaging them with the possibility of organ donation. Sometimes when the person who is close to death hasn't previously expressed their wishes on the matter, and that makes it particularly challenging. Organ donation saves lives. If you have heart failure or liver failure or lung failure, you will die. And the only alternative is an organ transplant. If you have kidney failure, you need dialysis, which keeps you alive, but it's not great. A kidney transplant restores you to normality. So organ donation is literally saving lives. For many years, my research interest has been to look at the experiences of healthcare professionals and medical scientists who work in what I would define as ethically challenging areas. So I came to my work on organ donation with prior experience of speaking to, observing, and then attempting to assist healthcare professionals with the ethical problems that they confront in their work. Bobby was part of the Organ Donation Task Force. It's no coincidence that one of the most important recommendations of the task force was to provide good ethical advice to clinicians. Bobby was part of the task force, she's been part of providing that ethical advice, she continues to be part of it, and it's that ethical advice, in my own view, has been perhaps the single most important thing that's happened in the last five or six years that has allowed the increase in organ donation to occur. I'm very proud of the fact that the increases that we have achieved in recent years have attracted international attention and only recently a delegation from Sweden came across to find out about our experience of increasing donation after circulatory death. So Britain has gone from being a country that was recognised to have a real problem in this area to one that has something to teach other people.